Most games in TA can be won by observing one simple principle. Control the battlefield, control the outcome. This means that you shouldn't ever engage with your enemy unless you have the upper hand, and if you have to engage with your enemy, make sure to do it back as close to your defensive line as you can, this way to maximize the amount of killing you can do. Again, most games are winnable from the start. Now, in order to observe this principle of control the battlefield, control the outcome, we need to look at one very particular awesome little unit. And a necessary one, basically, for controlling the early game, Dragon's Teeth. Now these guys are important, basically, for one excellent principle, map control. Everyone's played in a game where they've been around no man's land and after an extended battle have found that the area is virtually impossible to get around. Units in TA can't move between Dragon's Teeth easily, or even wreckage of other units. So, to control the early game, and once you have some uh, offensive structures built, using Dragon's Teeth becomes paramount to both keeping them on the field and having them last their duration. Now, there are a few different ways that you can employ Dragon's Teeth. I'm going to go over a couple now. Uh, one basic rule to observe is that you don't necessarily need to be building them in neat little rows. Build them around your high, more high profile targets, like your defensive structures, and build them to obscure like lines of uh, like supply lines for your enemy. For example, on Sherwood here, this main central area, which is uh, high in metal, can become extremely difficult to navigate. This, however, can be mitigated by keeping construction bots here to keep clearing paths and by building Dragon's Teeth to control the movement of units through this area. Now I'm going to go into a few different ways that you can build them. Here is a quick test I've set up just to show you about what I mean when I talk about building DTs in rows. I've got this little weasel here which these three construction vehicles are guarding and I've queued up a bunch of Dragon's Teeth all in rows just to show you how they work. This one at the top is building Dragon's Teeth in a simple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 fashion the next one down is building in a 1, 3, 2, 5, 4, 6, 5 uh, fashion. And the one at the bottom is building similar to the one in the middle, but with a 1 grid spot gap between each, each DT. So, let's see which is quicker. I did try to line them all up as evenly as I could, but uh, yeah, they're, they're a little bit tricky to control. The, the one at the top there seems to have a bit of a head start, but it shouldn't matter too much. This one in the middle is struggling. Come on, there we go. It's finally got it together. The one at the bottom is going to be building quicker. There are no units in the game that can move through a one grid spot on the map. So having this tiny gap between Dragon's Teeth will cut down on a little bit of your metal costs and it'll take a little less time to put up a row. And as you can see, this one in the middle that was having trouble, he has already caught up to the one in the, the one at the top there. This is because the, uh, the one in the middle here only has to move every two Dragon's Teeth that he builds, whereas the one at the top has to move after every single one. You get a little bit of an advantage with the construction vehicles because they don't have to pause for as long between building units as the, as the construction bots. Uh, but uh, the results speak for themselves. Here we are, the one in the middle has already overtaken the one at the top. This is why it is not optimal to build your dirt, your Dragon's Teeth in just a straight up row. The one at the bottom, obviously, already finished, using the technique as the one in the middle but with the one gap. So there are fewer Dragon's Teeth, so fewer metal costs finished in less time. And that's the, that's the lesson. So let's go to a map and check it out. So here we are on Gods of War. It's one of my favorite, favorite maps. And I thought I'd just share a little bit about Dragon's Teeth on a map like this. Uh, here I've got some construction aircraft. I really like going air first on Gods of War. I don't know why. Uh, it's just what I like. Now, see here that I'm building my defensive tower sort of a little bit in off the shore. If you're anything like me, you both love and hate arms pelicans, the uh, amphibious advanced K-Bots. Uh, so this is just a basic way of, of guarding your shoreline, you know, just, just to stave off the, those early pelican rushes. I'm building just in a straight up row right now. With the construction aircraft, it's not really necessary to, to spend too much energy trying to figure out the optimal way to build Dragon's Teeth rows. It's sort of is what it is. They can fly right over it. They don't have to recharge between, uh, yeah, between between construction. So um, they do an all right job of just just going ham on them, you know. And once you have these lines up, see pelicans aren't getting through that. <laughs> That's a simple fact of it. And once the uh, once the rows are built, you can just keep piling up the uh, the uh, the defenders here, just like this. 
this becomes a pretty untouchable shoreline. Down at the south here on this island, we have this construction aircraft. Now, important, first thing you should build, base defense. You're building a beachhead on someone else's island, rightfully. So it's sort of fairly important to, uh, to defend it first. We're sort of going for a controlled invasion here. And ideally, once or while the uh, defensive lines are being put up, uh, we can go about the, the dragon's teeth now. Now, see, here's a slightly quicker way to do it. You can really put up some dragon's teeth in a hurry if you're just a little, little more careless. It can start to look like a quite daunting beachfront. And in just a few seconds, dragon's teeth can be up, towers can be up, and you can get onto your more important constructions like your economy. Just like that. Uh, the same is true on basically any map. Coast to coast is a good one for, for using dragon's teeth in this manner. As uh, it's sort of the, the poor mechanic, is you know, long range artillery and, and, and shoreline defenses. But look, this is only a couple minutes into the game. I've just got my lab, some basic economy, and look at that. There, there is there's eight defenders, a whole shoreline worth of dragon's teeth just ready to go. That's map control on an island map. And down here at the south, already very, very dangerous, super easy to set up, difficult to fight against. It should be worth noting that artillery sufficiently strong enough can punch dragon's teeth. It will take a bit of shooting. That's because they have defenders here. I can't take out this one. But heavy artillery uh, can make short work of dragon's teeth. Even a particularly committed army can, can punch holes in rows of dragon's teeth. Uh, well, I think that's about it for this quick little tutorial. Uh, it's a simple dragon's teeth techniques, map control, control the battlefield, control the outcome. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, if you'd like to see anything else, feel free to shoot me a suggestion. Uh, subscribe to the channel too. Uh, it makes me feel good. Boosts my ego a little. Uh, Till next time, we'll catch you.